we are finally back for a proper hunt here on Nesper's Valley in Way the Hunter. It feels like it's been forever between the Trophy Lodge tour and our hunts over on Transylvania, but today is the day that we finally name our melanistic mule deer buck. And if you're not yet familiar with him, this is our guy right down here. He is a one-star adult now. First spotted him as a one-star young, I believe just at one year old. But if we take a closer look, He's got a split on the back on his right antler and a split on the front on his left antler. So uneven, not likely to be a future five star, but still there's going to be a community tab pool in order to name him. And there's going to be five different options. In the meantime, we do have another uneven one star adult here. So we'll continue to try to benefit this herd. The five options are going to be Midnight and Storm. Those two are the most requested. And then three I really liked, Poltergeist, Blockbuster, and Osiris. Commenting those names isn't going to help anything as far as the actual voting for his name. Be sure to go to the community tab post and place your vote in the poll and we'll determine what to name him. He's got a long way to go. Mule Deer lived to be, I believe, 12 years old, so it's going to be a while. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to follow him along. So very much looking forward to getting to see the results of that poll and looking forward to just following along on his adventure. And it's going to be a lot nicer when we can stop calling him the Melanistic or anything like that and have a proper name to call him by. Another kind of important order of business is to continue managing our Whitetail herd over here. It's now produced, I think, three five stars. And last I checked, there's another pretty promising buck in there. That would be the one right there, a three star adult standing next to a three star mature. But also in here is probably the lowest star rating mature we've ever had, just a two star. And that's the kind of stuff that's important to take out when we have high genetic males in there, like the three-star adult. Now, with whitetail, and they're one of the only species where this is the case, a three-star adult is not a guaranteed future five-star. They can still top at four-star and not quite get there. But even still, to be a three-star adult, they've got to be 80, 85 plus percent. And when we take out a two-star mature that's far lower than that, the average goes up and the future respawn is potentially better. And I've seen some questions in Way the Hunter video comments recently asking about like how aging works and how genetics work and all that stuff. So I think we'll do a video in the fairly near future talking about all that in depth. But as for now, a 55%, I think we shot an uneven like one star adult or something that was in that area recently too. So probably by taking those really high genetic males when we're shooting our five stars, it's lowering that average and it's inevitable that at some stage that is going to happen. But now that we've gone through there, there's a number of areas we need to check and having not been on Nez person in a while, it's probably going to take a while to remember, so it'll be interesting to see how things go as we move across to all the areas. I am thoroughly confused. We've got another 5 star elk up here. I can't imagine why things would have aged again because I'm certain that when we killed the last two 5 star elk, Aging had just occurred because Showstopper, you know, his rack changed. He became, I believe, seven years old and we ended up taking him down. I did the lodge tour. Unless maybe, like, I left the game open by accident or something after that. Because it happens on occasion. But I didn't think aging would have happened again yet. That really makes things extra interesting. But, man, again, it's impossible to get over to where they are. But hopefully we can get a good clean shot of them. He looks pretty unique, like really low tines and wide set, but 100 yards away they are alert. Got the Styr SM12, so we know that can punch through. Let's try to slot that into the heart. And that's another 5-star elk dead, and we're actually in an interesting position with 5-star elk. There's not a lot more places to put them in the lodge, there's a few spots that I think maybe we could put like a narrow set one. I don't know if this one could fit. That does also explain, though, the fact that aging has occurred. Why our soon-to-be-named Melodistic Mule Buck was now an uneven one-star? Because I thought, when I had last seen him as a one-star adult, he was even. But obviously, aging has occurred, he's aged another year, as has everything else on the map. And that really opens up where we need to go and where we need to check out. But he actually kind of dropped in a cool way with that log. I don't know if it's going to make for a great photo, but might be able to come up with something. I mean, of our elk photos, it's probably the best one we've had. I wish he was maybe like leaning a little bit less to the side, but definitely not a bad deal. 
Well, let's see what this guy is. He has to be the four star that was among the two fives last time. We did shoot him in the heart, although must have been just through the top of the heart based on that angle. He is though 98.49%. Bigger than I thought for sure. A full score of 472. So he probably had another year then, but still yet another five star elk. It's like I said, gonna be interesting to determine where to put him. But now we've got that many more places to go and cover because even places that we checked in that last video need to be checked again as well. That, you know what? I might know what's going on. Because that looks like a big elk too. If that's a five star, I don't know what to say. But if that's a four star, then maybe that's the herd at like a rarely used drink zone. We'll be able to get in range to spot them. There's another good one there. I mean, he is a four star. But I don't think he looks like the four star that we were chasing around in that last video. He's next to a three star mature, which does kind of make sense. But I mean, that's not the same frame as we saw. So even if it's the same elk and he's aged and gotten a different rack, aging still has occurred on this map. But we do need to determine what we actually want to take out from here. That one star adult is not overly impressive, but could still be pretty young. I mean, the three star is uneven. And we know there's really good genetics here, so that actually could be one worth taking out. Plus, he's fairly gray. I mean, we might as well go for it and see what happens. Sort of a weird angle and maybe not the best place shot, so we'll make sure he goes down. Pretty cool, though. We got a five-star elk, a three-star up there, and then the four-star that he could turn into a five-star as well. He didn't look overly gray to me, but I want to see what this guy actually is, given the fact that he is uneven. But... First shot would have been lethal with the right lung there at 252. And then I think second shot also would have been lethal. It's just that we had already hit that lung, so there was nothing, no more damage to do to it. He was 79%, so not bad, but not one that would have reached 5 star. I don't know if that's necessarily helping that herd, because that's pretty high, nearly 80%, but either way, getting to learn a bit, we don't see a lot of uneven elk like of that size. So good to know like what kind of potential genetic range they can be in. I don't know if aging has occurred or not at this point. We spent the entirety of drink time just going around to all the different places looking for animals that we've been keeping an eye on, and nothing increased in star rating, nothing has died of old age, and I really don't know where we stand. I don't know where that five star elk came from, unless it was the four star that is aged, because we also never saw that four star. There was one there, but the rack didn't add up to what we had seen last time, so. I'm not sure at this point, but I decided we might as well go ahead and go through the grassland. Having found Showstopper, our albino whitetail, and now the melanistic mule deer, it just makes me want to hunt for more rares. And looking at the areas to do it, I really think that probably the grassland is some of the best areas for hunting for rares, just because of the pure number of deer. If we take a look at the map here, if we just zoom into the zones, I mean, there are just tons of herds all right down along the river and if we walk through it during feed or drink time we're bound to see a ton of animals and as we continue to manage our herds we called that guy in with a low fitness call knew he was under 50 percent that just makes it more likely that any rares that do show up are going to be decent but i do think what we've seen so far today in a random five star elk showing up more four star elk the three star adult whitetail and stuff a lot of that is due to just herd management and shooting the proper animals, working on having your average genetics in those herds in those areas as high as possible. But another aspect of it, I really think, is just time put in. As more animals age, you may have a one star young that you don't realize is special. And maybe you're hunting other areas for several weeks, you come back and suddenly there's a four or five star there that's just been aging as you're hunting other things. That's why I want to spend time on maps like Transylvania. We got the five star red deer recently. We just shot the one eyed black wolf for the mission. I want to be able to add more things to that lodge. And I think as big an aspect of it is just putting time in. And another reason too, we got to get back on Aurora Shores. We put in a lot of time there. And I feel like we're just getting to that stage where we can have that happen. We can stumble into things that we didn't expect or just have some of those animals that we haven't been paying attention to potentially reach five stars or you know, a, a trophy size. So a lot of it has been aging showstopper, aging our melanistic mule deer buck, and just continuing to hunt for the other trophies that show up out here. And I'm just hoping that we can continue doing that on other maps because 
what we have here on Nespers is really, really fun. And that leads us to where I intend to attempt to wrap up this video with a little bit of moose hunting. We obviously shot our biggest five star moose by a long shot in the, I think the video before the lodge tour. And unfortunately I didn't have my live reaction because I was quite sick at the time. But I really love the look of the five star moose, both the Alaska moose and the moose here on Nez Perce. I think the Alaska moose, the like body models look better, but I do really like the antlers here on this map. So that's something I want to continue working towards. There are some places where I think a moose would fit on the wall better than an elk and vice versa. And when, when it comes down to completely filling the lodge, what we have left for the most part are really big plaques for things like elk and moose, and you can put deer on them, but they look a little undersized on that plaque in my opinion. And then just small game. And the good thing is, we can sort of do a little bit of both by hunting for moose. We have that potential to see Ross's geese, Lesser's scalp, the mallards are up here as well. So it's a little bit of, no pun intended, but killing two birds with one stone. Plus, when we see probably the smallest mature moose we've ever seen at 10%, a little bit of a first there at that. I'd almost tax him if we had like a hall of shame or something, but we also shot him in the head and cannot, so nothing that we could do about that, even if we had an extra lodge. Would have been a little more fitting if that was a five star wild duck, but good to know that stuff like that is around. I don't know that any of these are actually things. Are there two four stars? There are. Well, that's encouraging. Got a one star adult, one star young. I don't know that we want to shoot any of those ducks, but that's kind of the point anyway if we're here and if those age to five star because they don't live very long you got to be in the area when they do and hunting moose that gives us the chance to get them now the scalp on the other hand actually do live fairly long i think they go to like 19 years old wild ducks are maybe 10 something like that so it's a lot more important to catch the wild ducks as they're going towards their maximum age but these guys can live for a while but a two-star mature is certainly not helping out our overall genetics with them. So at some stage, we should get like a shotgun or the 22. Obviously, we have them. I just never carry them. And when we see a duck that maybe a five-star shows up that we don't expect, normally we just do something like that. But if we're going to do like, maybe one of these days we'll do just a moose and waterfowl hunt where we just have the 300 and like a 12 gauge because, I don't know, every now and then <laughs> shooting the duck with a 270 or a 30-06 does seem a little weird. That said, it does work. We hit him right in the wing there at almost exactly 200 yards, 63%, so just good to take that out. Really hoping to get a five star of them. Apparently that will go towards two missions though. That definitely doesn't look too bad though. A three star adult. This is in the same general vicinity where we had one of the four stars, and I can't even remember what video it was, but we found two four star moose that unfortunately both actually died of old age. There's a two star adult there too. So I don't even think we're doing any shooting here. We probably want to leave both of those go, but I imagine that's where the genetics are coming from. And I mean, one that makes it to four star is good. Moose are a little bit weird. They can get to four star adult, and I actually believe when that happens, it's a bug. So hopefully that's a legit three star adult and we see mature soon, but either way, very, very encouraging out of this spot. Now, another thing that lives forever is Ross's geese. I think they go into like the 20s, and I feel like it would probably be safe to take a two-star mature, so gotta make sure that shot's gonna land. And there probably were more in there than we actually got the spot, so we'll try to make sure that there were no five stars or anything special in there. We've seen a couple of fours, but they always seem to end up dying of old age, and Again, we get distracted with other things and spend our time chasing deer down south and bighorn and mountain goat in the mountains, so we very well could have just missed out on a five-star goose by now, but probably wouldn't be the worst idea to maybe shoot some of them. I don't know why they've just turned and started coming back this way. If we had a shotgun, we'd be in good shape right now. But it was literally right here where we shot the last five-star moose, and I'm hoping to maybe see some other good moose genetics in this area, but... I do think with this kill, and maybe learning a little bit about what geese to take, 60%, so probably two star matures are pretty safe. That's going to do it for this one. So we've got another five star elk to go and place in the lodge. Got a pretty promising one star adult moose, which could have been with our five star, I don't know. But let's see if we can actually find a spot to make that elk fit. I think we might have a spot here, just barely. But that guy doesn't clip through, so 
Maybe we can get a couple more elk. I don't know if this one will fit, because we can't have him face the opposite direction as he is. But that just subtle lean, I guess it would be to his left, just keeps those antlers from going up into the roof. So that's cool. This back corner is insane, by the way. We have the four-star whitetail there that... That was our first ever big whitetail and would have been a 5 star if we had any idea what we were doing. I think it was 92%. But I really like what that's become. We got the 5 star gray wolf and badger, got our biggest 5 star whitetail, first ever 5 star elk, all this stuff back here. Looks really, really nice, but I'm glad that we were able to find a spot for it. I love elk hunting, I don't want to feel like we have to stop chasing them because we don't have any more room in the lodge. And again, talking about rares and stuff, if we ever see rare elk here on Nez Perce, we're going to have a ton of fun going after them, but very cool to get another 5-star. By the next time we come out of here and Way the Hunter, we'll have a name for our Melanistic Mule Deer, so again, be sure to check out that community tab pool for that. And on that note, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.